This one's for couples. 13 embarrassing questions. Who overthinks everything? Who showers less? Who is always eating? Who has a nicer butt? Who is more possessive? Who drools more? Who is a better driver? Who curses more? Who always sleeps in? Who is always on their phone? Who has a worse singing voice? What do you have to say for yourself? What's for dinner? What's going on here? What's that stink? What's this for? What time is it? What's that? Elementary, my dear Watson. Life's like a jigsaw puzzle, isn't it? Each piece tells a part of a bigger story. Some are bright and fit right in, while others, well, they are shrouded in shadow. In Dallas, a tale unfolded that challenges the very essence of love and trust. This is the story of Daishi Stevenson, a story that resonates with unspoken words and hidden truths, a life taken, a mystery unsolved, a family's quest for answers. Hello and welcome to Watson's World, where we shine a light on the darkest of stories. I'm your guide through this journey, Kevin Watson. Today, we delve into a case that reverberates with the cries of lost love and shattered dreams. The story of Daishi Stevenson, a woman whose life was filled with hope and joy, tragically extinguished in circumstances that left a community reeling and a family grappling for answers. Let's begin our journey into the life and ultimately demise of Daishi Stevenson. Folks, I typically focus on stories emerging from Jamaica and Canada, but today's episode takes us to a different setting. The story of Daishi Stevenson struck a chord, not just due to its circumstances, but also because of the stark contrast it presents. This couple, often seen sharing moments of affection on social media, seemed the epitome of love. God heard my pain. He sent me a Superman. Praying God blesses me and my loving husband for many more years to come. Having a supportive partner can literally change your life. Having a man that don't play about you hits different. When you don't play about your peace, your health, and your well-being, that totally hits different. That's what women mean when they say they don't need you if you can't make life easier. It's not about money. Feels good to be with someone that doesn't want to see you sweat about anything and everything. If anybody knows me or done be around hanging with me, they know I'm faithful, I asked Steph, when it comes to my marriage in my relationship. I don't chat. I don't talk to other mans. I don't text mans. I don't flirt with other mans. I don't even lead man on to even think they have a chance with me. I never and will never have my husband out here looking like a fool. Because when I'm with somebody, I'm with that one man. Why would I risk my steak for some shrimp? It's your birthday, baby. We got the grip. And you leave, baby. We turn up, we turn up. We just ate graphics. Y'all, this is so beautiful, isn't it? Y'all just don't understand. I ordered this Bible. The reason I got this Bible, y'all, you think I've been reading? I told him I'm gonna read some couple of scripture of this Bible, y'all. But I ordered this Bible from Amazon. But in reality, it's like a lock safe box. He don't know that what's in there. So, y'all had to know I couldn't put the whole 10,000 in there plus the ring, so I have 
I don't know how much thousands I got in there with the ring. But I have the rest of the thousands in my purse. So here come easy. He don't know. And his last birthday present is going to be on the 7th of April the 7th, which is his last birthday present. I'm be so excited. So, me's about to come. I'm about to give him $10,000 in cash. And I bought him this new ring. Where well, it's inside this Bible. I bought, and I took his phone, y'all, because he tried to get on Facebook a while ago. I ain't want him to be looking at my shit. Me in Jamaica, y'all, with the vibes. Literally. A bread fix. Now, bread fix over. Me, I don't know what up. Happy birthday. <laughs> Happy birthday, huh? You should have stayed over there, shit. Yes, brother. That's right, B. Thank you, my video. Yes, y'all. I think I got good service. Happy birthday, baby. Here you go. I got you a Bible for your birthday, baby. You got to keep God first, baby. Read, uh... John 3.16. Open the Bible. <laughs> a new ring, baby, and I got you 10000 but I couldn't put 10000 in there. Show everybody about your ring. Look at you. Yes. Let me see, baby. Ooh, look at my nigga. Yeah. Ty, I want to give you 10 in cash. I don't know what you're going to do with You can do whatever you want to. 10,000. I don't know. Here, baby. And I got it in there, too. The rest of it in there. You're welcome, baby. You're welcome, baby. Good job. Look. <laughs> Yeah, not at my husband with new ice on his hand. Don't play with his don't play with his fucking wife. Don't play with my nigga. Those real diamonds. Tell them, baby, we're gonna wear nothing for the diamonds, baby. Real diamonds. Cost a pretty pretty penny, but it's real diamonds, baby. I work for you. I could lose everything today. I know I get it back just because of you. I know you so much measy. Yeah, that's right. New ice for my nigga. Yet, it's heartbreaking to realize that behind this facade of public adoration, there were darker, more sinister realities at play. So without further ado, let's dive into the deeply moving and complex story of Daishi Stevenson. Daishi Stevenson, born on November 16, 1998, was a vibrant soul whose presence illuminated the lives of those around her. Residing in Dallas, she was not just a woman, she was an entrepreneur, a dreamer, and a lighthouse of positivity. Daishi's entrepreneurial spirit led her to start a tax preparation business and a boutique pouring her heart and soul into every endeavor. Her life was a canvas of ambition and dedication. But Daishi's life was not just about business. It was about love, family, and relationships. At the heart of her world were two people she cherished deeply, her daughter, a bright light in her life, whom she adored beyond words, and her mother, who had suffered a stroke Daishi's dedication to her mother's care was a testament to her compassion and nurturing spirit. These familial bonds added layers of love and responsibility to her life, painting a picture of a woman who was not just an entrepreneur, but a devoted mother and daughter as well. However, her heart also found its counterpart in Michael Smith, a man from Florida who shared her entrepreneurial spirit. Together, 
they embarked on a journey of love, aspirations, and shared dreams, culminating in their marriage on May 24, 2021. I'm still speechless about my beautiful wedding yesterday. I already married the love of my life on May 24, 2021. I really prayed and cried out to God to send me somebody to love me for me, the real me. God sent me a king. My husband's so faithful to me. He not running around making me look stupid. My husband is one of a kind. Good, bad, happy or sad that's my husband. I cry so much because I never felt this kind of love before. It's scary because he treats me like a queen. He shows me what love really means. I married a man, not a little boy. Their union was celebrated with joy and optimism, a seemingly perfect match. Dashe, y'all know I love Dashe. Everybody loves Dashe. I even love music, y'all. I love music because Dashe made me love music. I love the way he treated her. I love the way she felt. Uh, you know, Dashe had me feeling like I wanted to be married. You know, Dashe made me feel like that because I, I didn't give a fuck about no dick. And Dashe loved her husband and she always praised him. He down. Like, the whole time he was incarcerated, she stayed down. She she took on the, all the responsibility by herself. You know, even when he came, like, everything was mapped out. She had everything planned for them. She waited for that day to marry him. Yet, beneath the veneer of this idyllic union, there were undercurrents of tension, whispers of jealousy, and unspoken fears. Daishi's unwavering loyalty to Michael, even during his incarceration, was a testament to her devotion. But, as we all see, love's path is not always smooth, and for Daishi, it led to a tragic and unexpected end. October 24, 2023 marked a turning point in Daishi's story. It was a day that began like any other, but ended in a way that would forever alter the lives of those who knew her. The Dallas police received a call in the early hours reporting a shooting incident in southeast Dallas. The responding officers were met with a horrid scene. Daishi Stevenson, lifeless, by the side of the road, her vibrant spirit extinguished by several gunshots to the chest. The investigation that ensued was a labyrinth of emotions and revelations. The family, struck by an unimaginable loss, grappled with questions that seemed to have no answers. So why did you take her from my knees? Like I don't understand. I would respect him more if he tell me why. We definitely need strength. We need prayers. It's a big one. Daishi's sister, Jasmine, recalled the last conversations, the red flags, and the unease that had crept into Daishi's life. On the 21st, it was my birthday. And she called me, she wished me a birthday. He was like, you know, normal or whatever. We was laughing, joking. And then she just said like, sister, I feel like I'm finna die. So I was like, you know, girl, whatever, you know, brushed it off or whatever, you know, not thinking that's really how she was feeling. Like she, I guess she was feeling her death. So she kept saying her and my niece was going to come and bring me a gift, but they never showed up. So we had talked Sunday and she was telling me how he was tripping at the fur and he was trying to leave her and my niece. He was saying like she was trying to set him up, you know, flipping out, saying that he, she was trying to set him up. It was Facebook people out there. It was just some weird stuff, you know. So I called in FaceTime on Monday. She never reached back after me. You know, she got a busy life. So I was just like, baby, she'll call me back or something. The family's narrative painted a picture of a relationship that, while outwardly idyllic, was marred by underlying strife and unspoken troubles. 
as the community rallied around the Stevenson family. The mystery of Daishi's death deepened. The police delved into the couple's history, uncovering layers of complexity in their relationship. Surveillance footage, eyewitness accounts, and Daishi's own words began to form a mosaic of a relationship teetering on the edge. The question on everyone's mind was clear. Why? What could have led to such a tragic end for a woman who had so many dreams and aspirations? As we peel back the layers of this mystery, we find ourselves facing a harsh reality. The specter of domestic violence. A silent predator lurking in the shadows of love. The investigation into Daishi's death was a journey into the unknown, a path fraught with twists and turns. As detectives pieced together the events leading to that fateful night, a chilling narrative began to emerge. Michael Smith, once a loving husband, now stood at the center of this tragic tale as the prime suspect. Surveillance footage from the apartment complex revealed telling moments. Daishi is stepping into Michael's vehicle, a vehicle that would later be found with bloodstains and a single sandal matching the one Daishi wore. The discovery of multiple guns in Michael's residence added another layer of complexity to the investigation. The pursuit of justice took a dramatic turn as the police tracked Michael to a barber shop where a cell phone video captured his arrest. The layers of Michael's life began to unravel, revealing a battle with drug addiction and a history of tumultuous emotions. Um, I guess me just started back doing drugs, y'all. And so, he was smoking PCP with his daddy or whatever. It was a revelation that painted a starkly different picture from the loving husband the community thought they knew. As the investigation continued, the Stevenson family's anguish became a rallying cry for justice. In a way, love is not that deep. Love is not that serious. Especially if you have kids, just get away, get out of the situation. I don't, I don't wish this on nobody, nobody. Even the situation my auntie went through, I don't wish that on nobody getting none of their body taken away from them, nothing. I just, just get away. The pain of Daishi's loss echoed through the community. A reminder of the devastating impact of domestic violence and the often hidden struggles within relationships. In the wake of Daishi Stevenson's tragic death, her legacy became a beacon of awareness and a call to action. Her family, though engulfed in grief, stood strong, their voices resonating with a message of hope and a plea for change. They sought not only justice for Daishi, but also a brighter future for others who might find themselves in similar situations. Daishi's story is a poignant reminder of the complexities of human relationships and the silent battles that many face behind closed doors. It's a story that challenges us to look beyond the surface, to understand the depths of human emotion and to recognize the signs that might otherwise go unnoticed. As our journey through Daishi Stevenson's story comes to an end, we're left with a deep sense of sorrow and a renewed sense of purpose. Daishi's life, filled with hopes and laughter, was tragically brought to an abrupt halt, highlighting the grim reality of domestic violence that afflicts countless women worldwide. This chronicle, though unique in its grief, is a powerful reminder of the quiet struggles faced by many, often hidden from view, but all too real, in remembering Daishi, we find ourselves confronted with the urgent need to address the scourge of domestic violence. It's a call to be more than passive onlookers. It's a call to action. It urges us to become vigilant guardians of our communities, to lend an ear, to offer a shoulder 
and to extend our hands to those in need of support and empathy. Let's honor Daishi's memory by igniting a flame of change. Let's commit to challenging the cycles of violence, to breaking down barriers, to open dialogue, and to offering help to those who are battling behind closed doors. Our role is to be allies, to be voices for those who are silenced, and to ensure that stories like Daishi's serve as a catalyst for a better, more compassionate world. As we part ways today, let Daishi's Stevenson's story remain in our hearts. Let it inspire us to embody strength resilience, and the power each of us holds to make a meaningful difference. Here at Watson's World, we turn narratives into movements, transforming tragedies into lessons of empathy and unity. Thank you for being a part of this journey. Guys, as per usual, if this is your first time visiting this channel and you have not yet subscribed, click on that subscription button. Also click on that notification bell so that you will be alerted every time I upload a new video. You can also follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and X at The Noble Cop. Guys, you can also email me directly at thenoblecop at gmail.com. I look forward to seeing your comments down below, guys. Tell me what you think about this story. Until next time, walk good.